All right, we're back to the memory game and I'm just finishing up putting on my animations. So just to remind you one more time, we click on the square we want to animate, scroll down, find the animation we want to use. Once it appears in our animation pane, we're going to go into the timing options. I personally like to slow it down, make sure it's going to rewind, click on triggers, and I'm dealing here with rectangle 16. Okay. Then to add the second animation, I click on it again, add animation. I'm doing a fly out on the second one. Same thing, go into those timing options, slow it down a touch. Don't rewind on the second one. And then make sure it happens when I click rectangle 16. So what you should end up with is a list over in your animation pane that looks like this. When I click on rectangle four, the first time it's going to do the shrink and turn. The second time it's going to fly out. Same with rectangle 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So if we go into the slideshow, I'll show you what this looks like. We get our little game. If we click on each square the first time, we get a peek at what's behind it. Okay, I just found a match, so I'm going to click on that for the second time and it disappears. Click on that the second time it disappears. All right, now I got the frog, so I know where he is. He's over here. And I got the turtle. Okay, so turtle and turtle. Is it possible that kids will get these wrong and they won't disappear correctly? Yes, it is. Um, just, but this is just for fun. It's just a fun little game, so not a huge deal. It's really just meant for review or for play. All right, a couple of other little things that you might, might want to make sure you do. First of all, in the transitions, I would turn off the ability to advance the slide on the mouse click. Uh, it's very possible with young children using this one that uh, something might happen. They might click in the wrong spot. So, Secondly, um, you could add sound effects to the animations if you wanted to. If you go in, for example, to when it shrinks and disappears and things, you can go to effect options and you can actually play a little sound effect, like a little magical blah, blah, blah chime or something like that if you wanted. That's kind of fun. All right, some other things uh, that you could do in here if you so chose. If you go to the insert menu and then choose audio, you could record audio. So I might do something like this. This is a game for, you know, preschoolers or kindergartners. Uh, so I might record some instructions. So if I click on this insert audio and then record audio, I might do this. Click on each box to see the picture that's behind it. Then click on the boxes again to make a match. All right, so I just clicked record and then stop. I can call that instructions, for example, and then click OK. So that just gives me my little microphone speaker icon there. Then I can go into my audio tools that have appeared up here, go to playback, say I want that to start automatically, and hide it during the show so the kids won't see that. This is what that'll look like when you're done. Slideshow from beginning. Okay, so they hear their instructions and then they can begin playing. All right, so that is how you go about making a very, very simple memory game. Remember, this will not keep score or tell them that they got it incorrect or allow them multiple chances. It's really just a fun little game for them to play, so keep it simple.